So if you want to back up your house with solar power with batteries, it can cost a lot of money. So today we're going to talk about my systems and how much they cost. If you go online and you see the price of a large 48 volt battery or some used solar panels, you think, hey, I can throw some of this together and it will be super cheap. And there are lots of cheap ways to do it, but I want to be realistic and show you how much it costs if you're trying to back up a home with like a hybrid inverter and a gateway. And then I'm going to show you the cost of an off-grid specific system which again you can run your entire house off of but it's very different in price than this and the relative expense of your system will be determined by where you live how much sunshine you get and how expensive the electricity is if you live in a place like california where electricity is expensive this stuff starts looking very cheap but if you have cheap electricity this stuff starts looking very expensive in a best case scenario this thing could pay for itself in four years but it worse it could be like 20 years it all depends on where you live so i'm going to go around my property and show you different systems we're going to start with this one first so we have some eg4 stuff and then we have a ruxu stack of server rack batteries now the batteries are lithium iron phosphate and we have 58 kilowatt hours of storage and the batteries are charged and discharged with the inverter charger and it also has a solar charge controller so this is the heart of the system and for this to power a home we're using a gateway so the gateway goes between your meter and your house's main panel the price of the gateway and the inverter charger is six thousand five hundred and ninety eight dollars and for half the batteries we have two power pro batteries these are outdoor rated and they're four thousand ninety nine dollars each and we have one and two then over here we have a stack of server rack batteries this is 30 kilowatt hours and it's seven thousand five hundred and thirteen dollars so for everything you see right here it's twenty two thousand three hundred and nine dollars but we need to include the cost of solar or else this entire system is pretty useless and for that system this is the solar array so we have 24 440 watt bifacial panels connected on a carport and to build this structure i had to spend seven thousand dollars in concrete and then the carport was five thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars and then for 30 of these panels it cost five thousand dollars and including the shipping cost minus six of these panels which are sitting over there it was seventeen thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars so the total cost of the system is thirty nine thousand six hundred and eighty four dollars now luckily i live in las vegas so this thing cranks out some serious power during summer it's doing over 70 kilowatt hours a day but during the winter it's a lot less so we're just going to average it to 50 kilowatt hours a day if you multiply that by 365 that's 18 megawatt hours now the cost of electricity here in nevada is 13 cents per kilowatt hour so annually this thing's producing two thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars and if we divide that by the total system cost the payback period is 16.7 years now let's do the same exact equation but for san diego's electricity rate so their average is 39 cents per kilowatt hour their peak rate is over 50 cents per kilowatt hour and that's what people have to pay for because that's usually when they need to turn on their air conditioner but let's just ignore that let's take the average and the average annual production we're going to multiply it so 39 cents per kilowatt hour that means that this system will generate in san diego seven thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars per year and if you divide that number by the total system cost the payback period will be five and a half years and probably faster than that because you have batteries so for on peak times when it's over 50 cents per kilowatt hour you can run everything off of your batteries so that's saving a lot more money as well unless you're right on the coast then you're going to get more fog during summer if you're a little bit inland like temecula or marietta this thing is going to pay for itself very quickly for some people they can get it under five years but for some people it's over 20 years it all depends on where you live now my grid tie system has 16,320 watts of output and it cost me $32,700 with the federal tax credit it dropped the price down to $24,000 272 dollars and on most sunny days out here in las vegas this thing cranks up 100 kilowatt hours it's insane now i'm going to calculate without the tax credit because it's probably going away so last year this thing generated 24.2 megawatt hours and the average cost of electricity is 13 cents per kilowatt hour this thing generated 3146 dollars a year so for the system to pay itself it would take 10.3 years now let's do the calculation for san diego so 
this system in San Diego would produce $9,438 of electricity. But to get those output figures, you would have to be inland for sure. There's no way you're pulling that on the coast. And if you divide it by the total system cost, it would come out to 3.46 years to pay this back without the tax credit. With the tax credit, this thing pays for itself in like two and a half years, which is absolutely insane. And I have friends that still live there. And if you look at their electricity bill, this is a real issue. Like they need this electricity. Now this is my EP cube system. This thing is super cool. It takes my entire house and puts it off grid. I think this is the most underrated system on the market. Everyone's always arguing about Solark or AG4. This is probably my favorite. It already had a gateway before everyone else had it. It has fantastic software, fantastic support. It's super efficient, it has a high voltage battery. Each inverter has four MPPT, so it's DIY friendly. You can add your own carport, you can add your own ground mount arrays, and it's easy to wire it up. Each stack of batteries is almost 20 kilowatt hours each, so this is almost 40 kilowatt hours, it's 39.6. And each stack has an inverter on top, and in two of them run my entire house with multiple air conditioners. The reason people probably do not buy these is because the battery is proprietary because it's a high voltage battery. They have special connectors and if something goes wrong you have to go back to EP cube. That's the biggest downside but everything about it is fantastic. I love this thing. Now for everything you see here it's $21,000 so it does cost more than the EG4. My EG4 system with the Ruxu stack gets 58 kilowatt hours of storage but this one has a larger output capacity for the inverter and there's more MPPTs so there's pros and cons if this is all you need is 39.6 kilowatt hours of storage this is a fantastic choice if you need more this is not a good choice these use their own communication protocol and you can't swap it out for something else you have to go back to this company always which is a major downside but I like it the software and the app is so good out of all the systems I have this thing refresh is the fastest I've never had it locked up and it just looks so good and it's easy to use and it's easy to change the settings so yeah it's fantastic but proprietary batteries is not that fun and it does cost more now this system is an off-grid specific system so nothing here is connected to the grid if you want to build a super simple cheap system use an off-grid inverter then mount some solar panels and connect it to this and then connect some cheap 48 volt batteries so like eco-worthy server rack batteries vatiers you can use these power pro batteries but these cost quite a bit now there are cheaper options or you can build your own batteries i have lots of videos on how to do that but this is how you get the most output and capacity for the lowest amount of money so that's almost 60 kilowatt hours and the eco worthy 5 kilowatt hour battery is $849 so you'd need 12 of those which comes out to $10,188 the 12,000 XP is $2,499 and then the last thing you need is solar panels and you need to mount them that can be pretty darn expensive though there are used panels, you can put them on bricks, or you can buy bifacial panels and put them on an Integra rack. This costs more money, but this is a pretty nice option. So let's call it $5,000. And the total cost of that system is $17,687. You might need more solar, you might need more batteries, whatever. But this is a very cheap option for some of you. If you don't want to use the grid, and you can build a large enough solar array to power your house even during winter, this is the cheapest way to do it. Now, I'm not sure how to do a payback period if you're not connected to grid. A lot of people do not buy off-grid systems for a return on investment. What they need is power. For a lot of people, they do not have grid stability or the cost to connect to the grid is like twenty dollars or $30,000 for the utility connection. So for those people, these systems make a lot of sense financially. Some people will see the price and they'll be like, oh heck no, I'm not gonna spend that. But if you do a little bit of math and you start thinking about it, for most places in the United States, it makes sense to build these systems. Building an off-grid system is so easy. You just hang this thing up on your wall, you connect some batteries. This one doesn't even have communication connected. You have a positive and a negative. You have Amphenol quick connectors on most of them, so you quick connect them, or you screw them on with the terminals on the server rack batteries. You connect some solar, and then it's charging, and then you connect a loads panel. The hardest part is mounting the solar panels. I can do this in like one or two hours, okay? 
The solar panels are awful. I hate mounting solar panels. Doing a ground mount array is a lot easier, especially for beginners. If you need to go on your roof, I would hire a professional, someone that knows what they're doing so that your roof doesn't leak. But in my opinion, for off-grid systems, a dedicated ground mount is fantastic. You can check on all the panels. You can clean the panels. If something goes wrong, you can swap parts out. You don't have to climb up on the roof with a harness or any of these ladders. This with a ground mount is easy and it's cheap. You can use whatever battery you want. You don't need to use a special type of battery with the 12,000 XP. You can stack up some homemade batteries, connect those two cables to the battery input, and please check out my current sharing video where I talk about how to do that properly though so you don't screw anything up. But yeah, there's not much going on over here and it's cheap. It's really nice. $2,499 for the MPPT capacity and the inverter output capacity is nuts. I I've been testing this thing for months and the only way I've been able to overload it is with a car lift and charging with 240 volts, 48 amps with a Tesla charger. So this thing is insane and it's actually powering my bunker vault. And this thing is a work in progress. We finally got the lights installed last week and we got the roof sealed. And it's huge. It's really hard to know what to do with this space. I've been trying to think about it. I wanna have a wall of greens and I want a bunch of potatoes growing in here. And behind you, there's some water tanks. And right now I'm building a water trailer that can bring water to my bunker and then I can filter it and use it. And then over here against this wall, I wanna grow potatoes. I already bought some planters, but I don't like them. So I'm gonna to have to try some new ones. It's a very slow process because it's a lot of work, but it's going to be super cool when it's done. Now the bunker vault has many splits and it's powered by the 12,000 XP, but this building is not cooled down and it's usually at 104 degrees during summer. And the 12,000 XP still hasn't shut down. The fans are on like 24 seven because it's so hot, but it's still going. And I'll have a lot more to say about this thing when I do my official review. I'm still waiting on the app and all the new firmware to come out. They fixed pretty much everything on this thing. And so far it's been fantastic, but we're gonna do an official review and do some really cool tests testing. Now most people like EG4 because you can use whatever battery you want and you have grid interactive features and now they have the gateway. Once they fix the app I think it's going to be fantastic. Now the biggest downside to the off-grid systems even though they're very budget friendly is that you have to have them indoors and the fans are very loud. With this one this is outdoor rated. You could throw this outside and you never have to see it or hear it ever again. And this is a pretty big factor. People don't realize it until they're living with an off-grid system. Them. When you have those fans going 24 seven, especially at night, if you're charging an electric vehicle and you charge up your batteries all day long and you have to hear those fans charging up your car at night, it drives you crazy. With this thing, you can throw it outside and forget about it. Now, pretty much everything in this video applies to all brands. If you get an off-grid inverter, they're typically not outdoor rated. If you get a hybrid interactive inverter with a gateway, it's gonna be outdoor rated. But these are some pretty popular options and even the EP cube is not very popular. I like it. It's fantastic in my opinion. So it really depends on what you need for where you live. Some of you guys will be happy with an EcoFlow, just a small battery backup if the grid were to go down. And then some of you guys, if you live in the desert or the Southern parts of America, you might as well get a solar power system because it will pay for itself pretty quickly. But it's wise to calculate all this stuff out before you install it because it can cost a lot of money. Also, this is not a lot of money compared to most installers. Like a $40,000 system, most of the guys at these stores are knocking on your door, they're selling like 60 or $70,000 systems or more. And you're getting a fraction of the capacity and output of these systems. So yeah, don't get ripped off. I have lots of other videos about that, but yeah, check them out. So I hope this video helps, especially if you're a beginner. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.